of Fox Sports. We are Black Mark. We are Detroit. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. Today, Justin Verlander will face the Kansas City Royals, a team that he has absolutely dominated his career. 15 and 2 lifetime against the Royals. JV today in search of his third victory of this season. Welcome to Comerica Park, downtown Detroit, final game of the series featuring the Royals and your Detroit Tigers. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pepper, Ron Allen. Glad to have you with us here for the final game, second and final game of the series. A little bit of a delay to the ball game today. We will start this one at 135, but Justin Verlander, Rod, he's been awfully good. He'll get another shot at the Royals this afternoon. You know, he's absolutely dominated the Kansas City Royals in his career, and he was really good uh, the last time that he told the rubber for the Tigers against the Seattle Mariners. He had 12 strikeouts in that game, but did not get uh, any help from his offense. Therefore, he lost that contest. All right, now James Shields will be on the mound for the Royals this afternoon. So you got Verlander and Shields. This is shaping up to be a terrific matchup today. Well, you have a couple of guys that are the opening day starters for their respective clubs. And you also have a couple of guys that have had really good success against the teams that they're pitching up against today. Five and one in his career for Shields with a 3.66 ERA. All that work was done when he was with Tampa. And, of course, Verlander, boy, he has just manhandled of the Kansas City Royals since coming to the movies for good in 2006 to the tune of a 15 and 2 record but that's not just what makes these guys so good I mean their mound presence they've got a tremendous work ethic that's one of the reasons along with their stuff that they're so talented All right, you mentioned JV in his last start against the Seattle Mariners on the last road trip Verlander didn't have the good breaking ball on that day so he had to get it done in different ways he did not have his curveball that afternoon against the Seattle Mariners but Verlander one of the things he's done the last few years that slide piece has really been a good pitch for him the velocity with his fastball was the best we've seen it this year it got all the way up to 97 miles an hour he continues to get stronger with each outing but it's this slider uh, that he's throwing to the right handers down and away and also down and in uh, to the left handers is the pitch that he really had to lean heavily on five days ago and gets the Seattle Mariners so Verlander now and when he doesn't have that good slider or the good changeup he can simply go to the slider which in his opinion is his fourth best pitch boys really nice to be Justin Verlander <laughs> these days isn't it though he is dominant as ever we'll see how he does here this afternoon after a short break we'll send you back to the call Sam Studios and Ryan Field coming up we'll talk Victor Martinez as well a little bit of a delay today but we will have baseball the tarp is off the field Tigers Royals in just minutes
Well, Justin Verlander has made his way into the dugout, getting set to make the start this afternoon. The Kansas City Royals in town to wrap up this, well, rain-shortened two-game series, as it turns out. Tigers a winner last night. Verlander hoping to continue his dominance against the Royals here this afternoon. We'll check out the Kansas City starting lineup that is presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. And for the Royals, Alex Gordon will lead it off. He'll be followed by Alcides Escobar, Billy Butler, is the designated hitter. Eric Hosmer batting cleanup. Lorenzo Kane out in center field. Mike Moustakis in third base. And their bottom three today features Frank Kuhr in right. Perez will catch. And Chris Getz is batting ninth and playing second base. Let's take a look at the Tigers starting defense presented by Beaumont Health System. You have Don Kelly in left field today. You have Jackson in center. Hunters in right. The infield left to right reads Cabrera Peralta Infante and the Prince. And Alex Avila uh, back behind the dish, catching Verlander for his second consecutive start. Well, Tory Hunter getting set to make another start here this afternoon for the Tigers. Off to a terrific start offensively. Tigers fired up for this one here today. And one guy fired up to face the Royals always seems to be Miguel Cabrera because his numbers a lifetime against KC off the charts. Major damage. Uh, the Kansas City Royals, they don't like to see. Uh, Miguel Cabrera coming in 93 career games against the Royals the batting average at 336 17 big flies and he's driven in 64 runs against them so best hitter in the game shows up against all teams but he really shows up against the Kansas City Royals and then Miguel Cabrera back in the lineup as per usual for the Tigers here this afternoon as we check out the top of the major leagues in terms of hits you've got a couple of Tigers who are among the best Shin Su Chu off to a nice start with his new team in Cincinnati and then you've got Hunter and Cabrera among the league leaders the major league leaders Altuve he's going to hit a couple of close to 200 hits for him as the Houston Astro a couple of years ago real nice player made an all-star team Lowry off to a real good start for the Oakland Athletics as well as Hunter and also Cabrera as you mentioned the Tigers have gotten some good production at the top including Hunter and Jackson to set up the guys in the middle we'll see if that recipe will work here this afternoon Tigers going for their second straight win after beating the Royals last night in a back and forth ball game seven to five was the final score last evening now the Royals lost despite making a couple of really nice defensive plays last evening Alex Gordon now he's already won a couple gold gloves and he made a play in left field this is the beginning of the game this is one of the reasons why Jackson uh, hasn't gotten any hits lately he should have had one last night and also Hosmer their first baseman although not necessarily swinging the stick the way that he's capable of uh, he brings that leather with him every single night he took uh, what would have been the third hit of the evening uh, away from Victor Martinez, although that was his first at bat. Victor had two other hits later in the game. Well, today's starting pitcher is right hander Justin Verlander, and he is presented today by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Now, we'll know very early today if Verlander has that real good curveball. He did not have it five days ago against the Seattle Mariners. He was pretty much fastball slider. He did mix in some change up, but when he has all four, of his pitches working it could be a very long day for the offensive club that he's going up against and then you add in the fact that he is just simply lights out uh, here at Comerica Park 40 games over 500 right here at Comerica Park. Well Alex Gordon getting set to lead things off for the Royals who by and large have played some pretty good baseball this year the Royals have won 10 games as have the Tigers KC comes in at 10 and 8 and the Royals built a 4 to 1 lead last night but you got to credit the Tigers right they came back nicely and had the offense going and as a result we'll check out the standings in the central the Tigers now uh, right back in there at a half game back a couple of surprises Minnesota at 9 and 8 of course the Tigers saw them the very first uh, three game series of the year in Minnesota and lost that series to Minnesota uh, but it's going to be fun all year of course the Tigers are the ones that are picked uh, to win the division and I don't think any, that's going to change anytime soon. It is a chilly afternoon once again here today, but here's the difference. The sun is shining right now. The clouds are breaking up, and by the time we get this thing going, it'll be about a half-hour rain delay. But Justin Verlander ready to go to work. It'll be Alex Gordon, Alcides Escobar, and Billy Butler as you see the sun peeking through the scattered clouds here this afternoon. Tigers and uh, Royals have both played in some cold weather here in the month of April. Today is no different. The game time temperature 43 degrees this afternoon. But it's good to see that sun shining. So here is Gordon. Off to a 338 start. He has knocked in 11 so far this year. 
And Verlander is ready to go to work. Here is the first pitch of today's ball game. It's grounded toward first base right at Prince Fielder. One pitch, one out. Expect a lot of the Kansas City Royals to go after Verlander just as Gordon did there on the very first pitch. Uh, Verlander throws lots of fastballs on the first pitch, and a lot of times that's the best pitch to hit against him. So here is Alcides Escobar. Who's batting 288? Escobar had a couple of hits and an RBI in last night's ball game. Fine looking shortstop for the Royals. And Verlander starts him off fastball on the outer edge, 0 1. Escobar hit 293 last year playing shortstop for Kansas City. Off to a good start this year, but he doesn't do very well against Tigers pitching overall. It's fouled back out of play, 0 2. Escobar already a couple of home runs this year, 10 RBIs. Puts the ball in play, only six strikeouts in 73 at bats this year. The 0 2. One ball and two strikes. That in itself would make him uh, an ideal fit for the two spot, which is where Ned Yost has him in this lineup right now. It is a lineup that features a lot of good young players, good offensive players. Billy Butler waiting on deck. Here's the one two. Right at Prince Fielder and a slicing liner and there are two gone. It's a good pitch by Verlander. It's a breaking ball down in the way. That's how you want to get Escobar out after you've gotten ahead of him. And uh, he lines one right at the Prince. So now here is Billy Butler and we've talked about this over and over. He has not been intimidated by Justin Verlander. In the least 396 against JV. And that is in for a strike going one. Butler off to a 214 start. He is not in 13 though. And the 0 1. Backed him out of there. Seven of those 13 RBIs came in one game for Billy Butler. Yeah, had a grand slam. In one of the biggest days of his career, that was back on the 15th of April. Tax day. It's the 1 1. He was taxing on the opposing <laughs> pitcher, that's for sure. 1 and 2. That, that came right off your tongue. You know all about April 15th, don't you? Pay enough. <laughs> <laughs> One, two on Butler. Billy sits safely in his last three. And Verlander's one, two. Low, two balls, two strikes. Well, for whatever reason, Butler has been able to see the ball out of Verlander's hand really good in his career. And we've mentioned the numbers. Butler's one of those batters that can hit anybody. The 2-2. Two, two. Low, three balls, two strikes. He's talented. He's always in a really good position. He's got that little toe tap, which kind of gets him started. He goes up, he comes back, and he's got really good balance. And he's got some really quick hands. Hand-eye coordination, very good. Made the all-star team last year. Drove in 100 runs for the Kansas City Royals. Hit 29 homers, too. 3-2 pitch. He is low. He draws a walk. He fell behind in the count, but ends up with the base on balls. Two out base runner for KC. If you're Verlander, really, it kind of makes sense to really not give Butler a whole lot to hit today. 396 career batting average. It's really not a small sampling. Uh, we're talking about four or five years of at bats against Billy Butler and Verlander going up against him. And the fact that Hosmer not necessarily swinging the bat that well right now in the batter's box now. Hosmer did have a double in the ball game last night, drew a couple of walks. Ball low, 1 0. That fastball by Verlander, 94 miles an hour. Usually doesn't throw 94 miles an hour in the very first inning. But with Verlander this year, the thing I've watched is the fastball is getting up there in velocity with each outing. Strike called on Hosmer. He touched 97 a couple of times against the Seattle Mariners five days ago in that ball game where he lost. But he had 12 strikeouts in that game. His season high in that category. 
One ball and two strikes. Hosmer, as you saw, just two for 20 lifetime against Verlander. Yeah, Verlander can go a couple different ways here. He can overpower you with a fastball, or he can simply go with a backdoor breaking ball or a fading changeup uh, to get Hosmer out here. Fouled away. Went fastball at 95. <laughs> Justin has dialed it up. Don't normally see him with that type of velocity here in the first inning. One and two on Eric Hosmer. Give you the lifetime numbers against the Royals. 15 and two for Justin. ERA of sub three. A line drive fair down the left field line. Kelly will dig it up in the corner. Butler is on his way to third base. They're going to stop in there, and Hosmer has an opposite field double for the Royals. One too many fastballs in the pitch sequence to uh, Eric Hosmer, who hits his third double of the year. Just about every pitch that Hosmer saw was a 93, 94 mile power fastball. He finally got that last one at 93. Great concentration. Basically hit that ball where it was pitched. Verlander, if he could do it all over again, probably would have mixed in some kind of off speed pitch in that sequence to Eric. So Verlander now will face Lorenzo Kane, who came into this series. Off a red hot start, but he was 0 for 3 last night with the base on balls. He's been their best hitter uh, with runners in scoring position this year. Justin will throw from the windup. Ball one. Kane with a myriad of injuries last year, which kept him on the shelf quite a bit. He had a groin problem, a torn hip flexor, a hamstring problem. Limited his playing time. Wave and a miss. 1 1. When you talk about trading away one of your key stars or key pieces to help build for the future, the Zach Granke deal did just that for the Royals. They got a really good shortstop, and I'll see this Escobar. And this young man here, Lorenzo Kane, to play center field. Bouncing ball, third base side. Barehanded by Cabrera. And he'll throw him out. Nice play. Royals threaten but do not score. They get a walk. They get a double. But both are stranded on a barehanded play by Miguel. And get that young man a smaller bat. That might help a little bit. Let's check out the starting lineup for the Detroit Tigers. It is presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. And for Detroit, it'll be Jackson, Hunter, and Cabrera at the top. In the middle, it's Fielder batting cleanup and Martinez and Peralta. And your bottom three today, Don Kelly will get the start in left and Avila and Omar Infante. And they are facing James Shields. James Shields pitches 200 innings a year. He's done that for the last six years in a row for the Tampa Bay Rays, and that's one of the reasons 
and why Dayton Moore, the general manager of the Kansas City Royals, brought him over in a trade. Uh, they needed a legitimate number one pitcher, and they've got one in big game, James Shields. Jackson batting 275, hitless in the opener last night. And the 0-1 is a strike at the knees. 0-2. Shields is 31 years of age, born in New Hall, California. Some really good years with the Tampa Bay Rays. Here's the 0-2. One ball, two strikes. That's his signature pitch. It's a changeup. He'll throw it anywhere from 82 to 86 miles an hour. He's got tremendous fading action uh, down and into the right handers and down and away, of course, to the uh, left handed batters. But he's fearless with that pitch. Shot to right field, slicing, fair ball. It'll go to the corner. Extra bases for Jackson. He's on his way to second and stops with a double. Austin Jackson was old for his last 26 before getting this base hit right here. But this is how you get back on track. You simply go back to the basics. It's a four seam fastball outside, but Jackson not aggressive here. He's allowing the speed and the velocity of the pitch to dictate where he wants to hit the ball, and he catches it deep enough to slice it down in that right field corner for a double. Really good approach there by Jackson. It says something about the start that Jackson got off to that he could go through a stretch like that and still be batting 275. Hunter tries to bunt and tips it into the glove 0 and 1. Torrey hitless as well last night batting 367. Moustakis will step in at third base. Leadoff double for Jackson here in the first. And the 0 1. One ball, one strike on Torrey. The majority of the hits that Hunter has gotten this year have been to the right side through the infield or into right field. And that's exactly what he needs to do in this situation. Runner on second base, nobody out. See if he can get something inside out it to the second baseman, Getz, or even to Hosmer. Uh, to at least advance Jackson 90 feet over to third. Now the 1 1. Inside again, Shields missing 2 and 1. And the flip side of that is James Shields knows exactly what Hunter is trying to accomplish. Therefore, three of the four pitches he's thrown Hunter have been really hard fastballs inside. Here's the 2 1. Swing and a miss. 2 2 on Torrey. 11 multiple hit games this year already for Torrey Hunter. That leads the American League and has done a great job of setting the table for the guy on deck, Miguel Cabrera. And the guy on for him, Prince Fielder. Two and two on Hunter. Leadoff double for Jackson in the bottom of the first. Bouncing ball left side. Moustakas has it there. After a check of the runner, Hunter is out. So Torrey unable to advance. Jackson one gone. Tim Hortons will sponsor the Kansas City Royals defensive alignment uh, today. And it's a Kansas City Royals defense that made 113 errors last year. Even though there are many out there to believe this team athletically uh, has the chance to have multiple gold glove winners. Hosmer, Escobar, Mustakis. Gordon's already won a couple. It's a talented group, but they made some mistakes last year, and they made a huge mistake last night, Mustakis, which opened the door for the Tigers. Here is Cabrera. And he rips one down past Mustakis this time. Jackson rounding third. He'll score. And Cabrera wasting very little time. Slams an RBI single to left. He about undressed. And Mustak is the third baseman there with that screaming line drive right past him. And he just, as we brought up earlier in the show, he just owns the Kansas City Royals. And that ownership continues with his 20th RBI of the season. One nothing Tigers. That'll bring up Prince Fielder. Fielder with 21 RBIs in 19 games this year. 
and he hits a ground ball to second. Gets will shovel to Escobar, and that is a double play. 4 6 3 ends the inning, not before the Tigers get a run. We head to the second at Comerica. America Park. Mike Moustakis will lead things off. The Bernstein Advantage brings you the scouting report on Mike Moustakis against the Tigers in his career at Comerica Park against Verlander. None of these numbers, right, are all that good. No, not really good for Moustakis. Get the Bernstein Advantage. We go to bat for you. Only 204 career against Detroit. And it'll be Moustakis to lead things off. Then Jeff Francoeur and Salvador Perez. Uh, what has turned out to be a sunny, if not chilly, afternoon here at the ballpark. Mustaka sold for four in last night's game, which has pretty much been a continuation of a slow start this year for the Royals' talented third baseman. Verlander gave up a walk and a double in the first, but no damage. And Mustaka looks at strike one. A couple of years ago, 2010, Mustakis was the minor league player of the year. I mean, he put up some huge numbers in the minors. Let's foul straight back 0 and 2. And this name really came up a couple of years ago when everybody talked about the future of the Royals. And this guy's just knocking on the door. He is here now. Hit 20 home runs last season in the big leagues. The 0 2. Popped him up. Third base side Cabrera in foul ground. And stock is retired. One gone. And we'll bring up Jeff Francoeur. <laughs> Verlander in his career in this ballpark. 40 games over 500. 66 and 26. Here at Comerica Park. Awfully tough to beat at home. Frank Coor looks at ball one. 0 for 4 in last night's game for the Royals right fielder batting 242. We'll shoot that one in the air to right field on a line but straight at Tory Hunter two gone. That'll bring up Salvador Perez. Game last night for Perez had a couple of hits, scored a run, and this young man is known as a dual threat, both defensively and offensively.
in for strike one. He had to be a little bit of a concern last year when he tore his meniscus after signing a, a long contract with the Royals, but that knee injury did not slow him down in terms of production when he came back. Hit over 300 last year in about half a season. Here's the 0 2. Got him, strike three, and that was a snappy inning for Justin Verlander. First strikeouts of the afternoon. One, two, three, go the Royals. Verlander off to a sizzling start today. Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. Dodge, visit Dodge.com or see your local dealer today. And by Spartan Stores for locations, visit turn to Spartan.com. Back here in downtown Detroit, as we go to the bottom of the second here at the ballpark, Tiger is out to a 1-0 lead over KC. Rain shortened two-game series. Tigers won the opener last night. Victor Martinez leads it off. It looks at strike one. It was good to see Victor get the bat going last night. Good balance in that batter's box last night. Real short stride. Got his hands in a good position to fire. And had a double and a single in last night's contest. And probably had another double taken away in a diving play by the first baseman Eric Hosmer. He had five good at bats. Last night. Martinez also has had good success against James Shields. Seven for 19. And he swings and misses. And that time Shields carved him up. One gone. First strikeout of the day for Shields. James Shields knows that his margin for air is very small this afternoon with Verlander pitching for the Tigers. He knows that he can't give up many runs. He's already given up one. And uh, that's just what happens when you go up against JV. Now Johnny Peralta. Ball one outside to Johnny. Batting 311. Two out of three last night for Peralta. Five game hitting streak at this point. Strike call. Shields is a guy that'll throw you 200 innings a year. He'll get you double digit wins. He's done that the last six seasons. And there's a strike called, and it's one and two. In fact, last year, Shields 227 and two thirds innings, which was third in the American League. He's 
one of those guys that expects to throw a complete game when he walks out there. He had 11 of those two seasons ago. Missed it inside two and two. Meanwhile waiting on deck Don Kelly. Popped up. First base side Hosmer comes in to make the play. Two gone. Hosmer was playing deep had to go quite a ways to get there but. Able to get there and make the play no problem. Looked like it almost came through the glove. You're right. It got stuck in the webbing. Gonna have to tighten that up. Here's Kelly. Strike one to Don. That was just a harmless pop up off the bat of Johnny Peralta. If he takes one of those clotheslines from the shortstop, Escobar, who has a plus plus arm across the diamond, it'll go right through that mitt. Or even a line drive off the bat. No balls, two strikes. Outside one two on Kelly Shields has a cut fastball anywhere from 86 to 88 his four seamer uh, can get him up to 92 93 he's got a curve ball and a very good changeup, a well above average changeup. Shields a mainstay in Tampa's rotation of course it was a very talented rotation. David Price. Matt Moore coming up. The one two just off the plate two and two Alex Cobb Cobb the other one yeah. But I guess the uh, the Rays felt they really needed to get some offense in their system and so they decided to trade away shields they got Will Myers. Swing and a miss Kelly goes chasing. And a one two three inning for shields his second strike out of the game Tigers baseball today presented by Bell Tire. Heavy dose of fastballs and Eric Hosmer their talented first baseman took one at 93 and hit it down the left field corner for a double. Verlander got back to mixing his pitches up in the second inning he threw some change up some real good breaking balls and had a really quick snappy second inning keeping these Kansas City Royals off balance. Yeah, he threw only eight pitches back in the second goes to the mound now here in the third and he's facing Chris Getz. It'll be Getz Gordon Escobar. Against Verlander, a one, two, three, second, and JV now is retired four straight. The 1 0. 
Strike called on Getz. Who has one home run this year. He hit it back on April the 16th. And this is not a guy who's going to hit too many of them. In fact, Chris's last home run was in 2009 when he was a member of the Chicago White Sox. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Ground ball right side on the backhand there in Fonte. We'll throw him out. Let's go back to the studio now. Time for a game break. We check in with Ryan Field. Thank you, Ryan. Here it is in the third. The Tigers on top, one nothing, courtesy of an RBI single from Miguel Cabrera. You wonder if the pitching coach Jeff Jones got in Verlander's ear after that first inning, where every fastball he threw was in the mid 90s. Now, since coming back, every fastball other than the first inning has been right around 89 to 91 miles an hour, which is where Verlander usually sits early in a game. Gordon, the batter. And he looks at a strike. Do you have any uh, thoughts on why JV might have come out throwing harder in this game? Not sure. But he certainly has uh, switched it around a little bit. And he's retired five in a row now. Here's the 1 1. 2 and 1 on Alex Gordon. Escobar waiting on deck. Verlander working at a nice pace here. The 2 1 pitch. Two and two on Gordon. Who's had a nice on base percentage this year, batting in the leadoff slot at 370 coming in. And the 2 2. Into the glove for strike three. Verlander has his second strikeout. Hey, don't forget to have your picnic or party in an upcoming Tigers game. Group picnics and party suites are on sale now. Groups of 15 or more get discounted tickets to select games. There's the phone number 313 471 ball or check it out online at tigers.com. Here's Alcides Escobar. Ground ball foul third base side. Escobar loves to swing at that first pitch. Especially if it's a fastball. Batting 284 Escobar. Tap foul behind the plate 0 and 2. Verlanders following the scouting report against Escobar to a T here. Get a head with a fastball. And then you simply go to some of your breaking balls to finish him off. Or you can even elevate the fastball. He'll chase with two strikes. That's going to nub down the third base line. Verlander is not going to have a play. It's going to be an infield hit. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Verlander definitely made a really good pitch there. 0 2 to. Escobar, but once Verlander got over to pick it up, the speedy Escobar was already crossing first base. Prince Fielder telling him, hold it up. No reason to make the throw. Two out infield hit, which extends the inning, and that means Billy Butler will step in. Good speed for Escobar. Stole 35 bags last year. Yeah, but Verlander lightning quick move. Ball one. And you have a guy in the batter's box that's hitting nearly 400 against Justin Verlander. You might not want to uh, run yourself into an out at second base. Butler last year drove in 100 runs for the first time in his career. Escobar three for three this season and stolen base attempts. Yeah. 
The 1 0, and there goes the runner. Here comes Avila's throw. It's on the money, but a little bit late, and a steal for Escobar. He stole that base on Verlander. And Verlander did throw over on the previous pitch, but very deliberate here with the leg kick. And Escobar has about six, seven steps under his belt before Avila gets the ball in his glove. Accurate throw uh, by Avila, but Escobar on his way up when the ball gets into Infante's glove. Butler takes on two. Oh, it's in for a strike. I don't know if Escobar is entertaining the thought of stealing third base in this situation, but he was seven of eight last year in stealing third base. Tigers got a run in the first inning. RBI single by Cabrera. That lead is held up so far. Little looper into right field. That's going to drop in. Base hit. Hunter fields it. Escobar will come in to score. And they manufacture a run. An infield hit. A stolen base. And Billy Butler does it again for KC. Hey, Verlander pitched around Billy Butler the first time up. Uh, this time with a runner in scoring position, he throws him a curveball that Billy stays on nicely. And with the big, huge lead that Escobar was getting at second base, there was no play for Torrey Hunter. 14th RBI for Butler, tied at one, and here is Eric Hosmer. Strike one to Hosmer. So it was looking like another easy inning for Verlander, a ground out, a strikeout. But the infield singles started the rally. Strike two on Hosmer. Two base hit the other way his first time up down the left field line. That was on a uh, 93 mile per hour fastball. First two pitches this at bat to Hosmer two change ups. One and two. Renzo Kane waiting on deck. Swing and a miss on the breaking ball. Hosmer goes down and another strikeout for JV is third of the game. Not before the Royals tie it up. 1-1. One, one. So we go to the bottom of the third. Shields has upgraded their pitching rotation. Here is today's Ace Hardware Scott's fan poll question of the game. Other than the Tigers, who has the best rotation in the American League? The Red Sox, the Royals, the Rays, or the Blue Jays? A, B, C, or D. Make your choice. 
You can enter your vote by texting ACE, then a space, and the letter answer to 37338. And Shields has got himself a run on the RBI hit by Billy Butler to tie it up. Avila leads it off in the bottom of the third. And it's in for strike one. Alex, then Omar Infante, and then Austin Jackson. A couple of home runs, a couple of RBIs this year for Avila. The 0 1 pitch. Inside and low, one ball, one strike. For two last night for Avila. Now the 1 1. Tigers went 1 2 3 in the second. A couple of strikeouts for Shields in that second inning. He's also induced a double play in this game. Vila fouls it back out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Royals trying to make that next jump and compete for a Central Division title or at the very least a playoff spot. They finished 72 and 90 last year. They were in third place in the Central. They're going to surprise the people this year uh, with that new rotation. Uh, they're back into their bullpen. Very good. Good pitch on the outer edge. Got him looking. And Avila disagrees with that call. So does Mr. Uh, Mr. Foxtrack doesn't agree with that call either of uh, Bill Wilk. No kidding. You run go up though and that's strikeout number three. Well Tigers hitters need to be a little bit more aggressive. Shields has thrown 30 pitches. 21 of those have been for strikes. He's around a dish. Ball one to Infante. It's a nice night last night for Omar. He had three hits, raising his batting average to 281 through 16 games. He's done major damage uh, right here at Comerica Park in the first seven home games they played here this season. Well, Infante had been struggling, but he had an RBI single in his first at bat in the second inning last night. He had only three hits on the entire trip. Ball low. 3 0. And he lost him on four straight. One out base on balls. First walk of the day for Shields. Break up Austin Jackson. Talking about Verlander having a pretty good pickoff move. James Shields has a good pickoff move himself. And when he gets on that to rubber, when he takes a stretch. And when he comes back to gather himself, he gets a really good look at the size of uh, lead the guy on first base has. You don't see many guys take their looks the way that he does. Although, one. although we watch Wade Davis, who started for the Royals last night, he takes his uh, he's stretched just like this. Yeah, very similar. Little peek back at the runner at first. You gotta be careful. He's got a quick move if you're Omar. You can't get off too far. Oh and two on Jackson who stopped an 0 for 23 slump with a double in the first inning. He eventually scored the Tigers only run so far. Now 21 runs scored this year. It's been at the top of that list. And currently is in the American League. One more than Coco Crisp of the Athletics. Here's the 0-2. One ball and two strikes. Of the statistics that we use to judge leadoff hitters 
Where would you put run score? Right at the top. Yeah, I would too. On base percentage and runs, not so much the batting average. One ball, two strikes. Runner goes to the shortstop. Escobar will throw the first. Hit and run there. And James Shields has a really good pickoff move. We told you that. 24 of those since 2006 season. Therefore, uh, he puts the runner in motion. That would be Infante. And because of that, uh, they stay out of the uh, inning ending double play. Tigers hit into a double play back in the first. Jim was a happy man last night. He got his closer back. And now he's hoping with the addition of Valverde in that bullpen that some roles can be defined down there with Benoit pitching the eighth. You've got Albuquerque, you've got Cope, you've got Rondon down there as well. Looking forward to seeing him pitch up here. Yeah, me too. It really worked out as well as it possibly could last night. Big swing there by Torrey. And when you consider that not only Valverde got the save, but what it did for obviously his confidence, the confidence of the fans, his teammates. And now it appears the Tigers have that back end that you know, they were searching for through spring training. It's almost like uh, Papa Grande had never left. Ball inside at low 1 1. Got yeah. his old locker back in the clubhouse today. Made his familiar entrance. It was a good night last night. One that we hope uh, they'll be able to repeat quite often this year. Tory Hunter bounced out back in the first inning. He is 0 for 1. 1 1 game where in the bottom of the third, Tigers have a runner at second and two outs. High chop to the shortstop Escobar tough pick another tough pick at first by Hasbro but he can't hold on to it. Everybody is safe put it at the corner. Escobar comes in gets the tricky hop and makes a real nice play but he throws it in the dirt Hosmer with real soft hands at first base not able to pick it and because of that the most dangerous hitter in the game as we speak. Uh, Miguel Cabrera gets a chance to drive it another run here. Infield hit for Torrey Hunter. And now you've got him at first and third. Osmer almost scooped that one in the backhand. Cabrera knocked in a run with a single in the first. Drilled down the right field line foul. Miggy down with a total of 20 RBIs this year. And the average at 375. Tigers, in fact, had Hunter and Cabrera tied for the league lead in hitting coming in. And the 0 1. Let to get back out of play. And as you can see here with the hot and cold zone of Miguel Cabrera, opposing pitchers. Boy, there's not a lot of blue on that list. There's not a lot of cold zones there. I'm surprised he got two of them. I am too. Here's the 0 2. Good block by Perez saving a run. We were talking about this last night. Cabrera sometimes when he goes to the plate. Uh, he finds himself sitting there with no balls and two strikes and before you know it. And because the pitchers don't go right after him. In the 0 2 count he works that count back to his favor 2 2 3 2 and does major damage. Uh, in those situations.
now it's 2 2. So Shields has thrown a couple in the dirt after getting ahead 0 2. Shields really doesn't know how to get Miguel Cabrera out. His numbers in his career are monstrous numbers against big game James Shields. Fought that one off. It'll go foul though. Two and two. The count stays on Miguel. Who extended his hitting streak to nine straight. With the base hit back in the first. 45 now thrown by Shields. That last pitch and last swing has Cabrera's feeling some stinging in his hands. Chilly afternoon like today. 46 though is our temperature right now. It's climbing a little bit. Broken bat, little looper back to second and caught on the run by Getz. Tigers get a couple of runners and a walk and an infield hit to strand two. America Park on a rainy afternoon. Let's take a peek at today's high speed stat brought to you by Charter Internet. It's the velocity, the range all season long for Justin Verlander starting back in 2007, where he averaged 94 miles an hour with his fastball. This year, 93 miles an hour with his fastball. So, not a big difference there. And Verlander back to the hill. It is a 1 1 ball game as we go to the fourth. Each team a run on three hits. And it'll be Lorenzo Kane leading it off. Kane, Mustakis, and Frank Coeur against the Tiger right hander. First pitch in for a strike. This young man right here didn't even start playing organized baseball until he was a sophomore in high school. But yet, athletically enough, and he's able to get himself to the big leagues. Sends a ground ball to third, backing up Cabrera. Flat footed throw, safe. Kane beat it out on a bang bang play. It's really the only play that Miguel had. The only other option is to charge this ball and, and find a tricky hop for yourself. So he backed up and then he threw off balance. And Maggie has enough arm strength to throw him out, but Kane has good speed. It'll bring up Mustakis. 
fourth hit of the game for the Royals another infield single they had one back in the third. Which set up their run that was Escobar. Moustak has popped up. It was in his first at bat back in the second. And a strike called. The Tigers had an interesting choice to make in last night's game in the seventh inning. Mustakis was up. The two men on, two men out. Jim Leland decided to bring in the right hander to face the lefty Mustakis. And he had Phil Koch available. But Jim felt, said before the game today, felt they were just going to pinch it. Tejada probably had they brought Koch in, and they liked the Benoit Mustakis matchup a little bit better. The numbers for Benoit were very good against Mustakis. And on top of that, they also had the uh, right hander, Frank Coor, who would have been next. There's a high fly to right. Torrey Hunter is under it. One gone. Torrey Hunter having a little fun out there with Kane. That ball went up, and Torrey Hunter, as we have seen him do in the past, <laughs> kind of pretending like he didn't see it and knowing that he had it all the way. Kane, however, was not buying. Kane actually said that uh, he kind of patterns his game after Torrey Hunter. Rusty Coons, the first base coach of the Kansas City Royals, told me that Kane patrols center field the same way that Hunter used to patrol center field. Those long galloping strides covers a lot of ground. Here's Kane's reaction. I wasn't buying. Nice try, though. Little gamesmanship on the field. One strike on Jeff Francoeur. The good ones, whether it's Torrey Hunter or Kane or really anybody else, seem to just glide to the ball. And that's a term that Ned Yost has used for Lorenzo Kane, a glider. Devon White used to glide in the outfield. The same way, those long galloping steps. The 0 1 is a ground ball to the right side. Going to be a tough play. Infante can't make it. Everybody's safe. And it gets away from Omar and advance the runner to third. Kane moves up 90 feet. Will be another infield hit and an error charge to the second baseman, Infante. We'll see if that ends up costing Detroit. Omar shows some range getting over there. Prince couldn't grab it. Omar does get there, but couldn't corral it and make the exchange to the throwing hand to make a play anywhere. And you got to give Kane some credit. As soon as he saw the ball go down, uh, he was able to get himself in over to third base. Third infield hit now for the Royals. Three of their five hits. Here's Salvador Perez. Vila saved a run 1 and 0. If you're Verlander here, yeah, just keep the ball at the bottom of the strike zone and see if you can get Perez to hit something on the ground. Tigers have turned quite a few double plays already this year. Kane at third base, Frank Coor, the runner at first. Ground ball gets him out of the inning. One ball, one strike. Doesn't appear that Verlander has that good curveball again here today. He's thrown quite a few breaking balls, but they've been of the slider variety. He's thrown a few changeups, not many curveballs at all. The only curveball that I can remember is the one that was a base hit the other way that Billy Butler drove in the only run of the afternoon for the Kansas City Royals. Two and one on Perez.
Here's Chris Getz waiting on deck. In the air toward right field. Hunter will back up. Runner tagging at third. That's Kane. Here comes Torrey's throw to the plate off target. Sack fly for Salvador Perez, and that gives the Royals the lead. So that error turns out to be very big as it sets up a run. Two gone. The Tigers, by and large, have played very well defensively at the start of this year. They came in having committed just five errors, which was the fewest in the American League. Here's Getz with two outs. He'll drive this one in the air to center. And it'll get him out of the inning as Jackson hauls it in. And the Royals settle for a run. Go to the bottom of the fourth. He's tried the mighty taste of Arby's new Mighty Minis today. Arby's slicing up freshness. And by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. Back here in downtown Detroit, Royals have a lead now as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. It'll be Prince Fielder leading it off against James Shields, who has gone first pitch strike on 10 of 12 so far. And he does the same with Prince Fielder. Fielder Martinez Peralta. Two runs, five hits, KC. The Tigers, one run, three hits. Here's the 0 1 to Prince. One ball and one strike. Fielder hit into a double play back in the first inning. And Prince came in with 15 walks, which was the highest total in the American League. Ball outside, two and one. And one of the reasons why Prince has gotten so many walks in the first three weeks of the year is because Victor had been struggling. And so teams have taken you know, the luxury of really pitching around Prince. There's a ball three and one. But it appears that Martinez is getting back to form. And uh, those walks will go down for Fielder. And he walked him right on cue another base on ball. <laughs> Lead off man on. Well the Tigers have as we expected two big guns in the middle of the lineup and they're getting it done. Twenty one RBIs already this year for Prince and Miguel he's awfully consistent in that same category. Uh, every single calendar month last year. There from April all the way through the end of the season, Miguel had at least 20 ribbies every single month. 
Cabrera has knocked in one in this game. Fielder is now just walked here in the fourth. Martinez struck out in the second. And that was a very quick one, two, three second inning for Shields. That'll get by the catcher to the backstop and rolls, and Prince will go to second. Tigers will put the tying run in scoring position. Wild pitch. Shields has some work to do now. Two and oh. Victor trying to tie this one up. Tigers fell behind as the Royals got one of the top of this inning, and there's a strike. And Victor does not like that call there by Bill Welke. And it appears that it was a little generous. Especially after you fight as a hitter to get yourself in that 2 0 count. You're zoned in. You kind of know what your strike zone is. You know where you want the ball. And then you get that pitch right there called a strike. There's another strike, and now Victor is going to take it up with Bill Wonky. Chatter going on now after two straight pitches that missed. At least he thought they missed. And that one also seemed a bit outside. So, so much for the 2 0 count, and now Martinez having a little chat with. Perez and Welke gets between those two. That was interesting. Perez, big boy now. <laughs> I take it you're not messing with him? I'm not messing with him. <laughs> Young, too. Two balls, two strikes. That's a young strength. I mean, he doesn't even know how strong he is. <laughs> That'll get by Perez. Move the runner up. Yes, yeah, he there. He lost his concentration. Yeah. Now the tying run goes to third. That's a breaking ball that's down, and Perez didn't shift the feet to get over. I don't know if he'd have been able to block it anyway, but he didn't go at it like he called a breaking ball. And he was trying to get over there and block it with two strikes. I've learned a new term, young strength. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like it. It's a difference, isn't there? <laughs> Between old strength and young strength. Three and two infield coming in a couple of steps. High pop up. Shallow left coming in is Gordon. In foul ground. Fielder will tag, but not even move an inch. So Martinez is out. And while we have a moment, here is the AT&T trivia question this afternoon. And it goes like this. Which current Royals player won player of the year in college and in the minors in back-to-back -back seasons? Which current Royals player won the player of the year award in college and in the minors in back-to-back -back seasons? A lot of good young talent on this team. Several choices that you could make. That's driven to the air to center field. It's shallow. Kane coming on to make the catch. Prince going to try and score. Here's the throw. It's caught. The tag safe. Outstanding decision down there by Tom Brookins telling Prince Fielder to challenge the arm of the center fielder, Kane. Kane running aggressively to the left, and it was very tough for him to stop on the dime and make an accurate throw. 
to home plate. Therefore, it was cut off uh, by Hosman. It appears that Perez is down with some kind of injury. Tried blocking the plate, and Fielder slid into that left leg. I think James is upset that Hosmer cut that ball off. What are you doing? Says Shields, and they might have had a shot if he doesn't cut it, don't you think? I'd have to take a look at another replay to uh, be certain. And right now, the concern is with Ned Yost and his very young, talented catcher. <laughs> Let's take one more look at it. I like the call here though by sending Prince Fielder home. If Frank Cord makes his play, I don't send him. Hard to tell. Had they not cut that ball, hard to tell. But the run scores, and that's all that matters. There's a bouncer towards second. Gets on the backhand. And Kelly is out. And that'll end the inning. But the Tigers able to tie it up. Prince Fielder comes in with a tying run on a bang bang play at the plate. Time later in today's game, it is brought to you by Miller Light. Prince Fielder scoring the game's tying run. It's a 2 2 contest. Eddie Rodriguez, who handles the infielders here, having a conversation uh, with Hosmer in the dugout. No doubt talking about whether he should have cut that ball or let that ball go. And judging by uh, the animated uh, hand gestures there by Rodriguez, I think he believes that Hosmer should have let it go. Well, certainly Shields did as well by his reaction. So here come the Royals now. It'll be Alex Gordon to lead it off. Gordon Escobar and Butler. Top of the order facing Verlander. All tied again. Each team with two runs. The Royals have five hits. The Tigers have three. Gordon is 0 for 2 and he looks at a strike. And Ver Verlander continues to throw those fastballs, those get me over fastballs at 89 to 90 miles an hour. After coming out in this game in the very first inning, throwing 95 real early. Gordon now putting together some solid seasons. He was outstanding last year. He was a teammate of Billy Butler's in double A. They came up together. Gordon had 51 doubles last year. Butler was saying that this is the Alex Gordon that I saw in double A. A kid that played with a lot of confidence. He's obviously undergone a position shift from the infield to the outfield. Rusty Coombs told me that's made all the difference in the world uh, for Gordon and moving him to the outfield. 
Now the one two. Into the glove for strike three. Fourth strikeout for Justin. Curveball here. And a good curveball. Verlander really hasn't had his good curveball in the last couple of starts. But that was a really good one there. Alex Avila was telling you before the game today that even when Verlander doesn't have his good curveball, it's still better than most in the game. Huh. How long do you think it takes for a pitcher to figure out they may not have a certain pitch on a certain day? Do they kind of figure that out in the bullpen? Yes, in the bullpen. You can kind of figure out whether you've got your good curveball or not. Verlander worked on that curveball in his side session uh, in between the two starts of Seattle and this start. One and one on Alcides Escobar. We're in the top of the fifth inning at Comerica. Final game in this series that was shortened by rain. We were delayed by about a half hour today at the start of this one, raining early at Comerica. Here's the one one. Two balls one strike on Escobar. Billy Butler waiting on deck. He's done some damage today. And you can say that on most days for Billy. The two one pitch. Two two on Alcides Escobar. Verlander reached back to get a little extra. On that last heater, and back up to 94. A well placed fast on the outside black. Soft liner caught by Infante. Escobar is out. Two away here in the fifth. <laughs> Good placement and there by Rafael Belliard, who positions the infielders as to where to play the opposing hitters. Omar was in the right spot. Now Butler, a walk, a single, an RBI. The Royals found a way to scratch in a run back in the third. Infield hit by Escobar with two outs. He stole second, and then Butler just served one into right field, a base hit. Here's the 0 1. Pull down the left field line this time. Ricochet around. 0 and 2 on Butler. Here's where you get Billy Butler to chase. When you get ahead of him, no balls, two strikes. And make him chase the fastball up or the breaking balls down. Go after that one, one and two. 70 now for Verlander, 49 of which had been strikes. He threw 126 his last start against Seattle, most he thrown this year. That's going to be a fair ball. Butler again gets Verlander. He'll round the bag but hold up with a single. He just has his number. Doesn't matter what the count is. Fell behind 0 and 2. That's why a lot of right handers uh, will not throw their change up to right handed batter. And because the ball stays inside and he just drops his hands on it. He's looking for a fastball in the mid 90s, but because of the location of the change up, just really just allows the hands to do the work and it's a bullet to left field. Butler on base for the third time this afternoon. That'll bring up Eric Hosmer. Billy hitting over 400 in his career against Berlin. One strike on Hosmer. Really unheard of. Against any one pitcher, but especially against an ace like Verlander. He is 23 for 56, 55. The wind is starting to pick up now here at the ballpark. 
getting cloudy again. Verlander really did a number on Hosmer the last time Hosmer was up. Steady diet of off speed pitches. And he struck him out. Now he's ahead again, 0 and 2. Hosmer back in spring training actually played a little bit of right field. The uh, Royals kind of tinkering with that a little bit. Perhaps in some interleague action, they might use him in the outfield. They haven't done a whole lot of it. They haven't done it yet in the regular season. Or in case of some double switches, they feel he's a good enough athlete, but he's such a tremendous defensive first baseman. One ball, two strikes. Double and a strikeout for Hosmer. Played in the WBC this year, Team USA. In fact, had five RBIs in the six games he played. And he just stays alive. Verlander starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with that curveball. We've seen a couple of those here in the fifth inning. And his last couple have looked pretty good. Rain starting to fall now at the ballpark. And the ground ball, base hit left field. That'll advance Butler to second base. <laughs> Two on now with two outs, and we remind you today's broadcast is on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting to the U.S. Armed Forces serving 175 countries and aboard ships at sea. They're watching around the world in Iraq, Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, and Japan. We welcome you all. Rain really coming down now here at the ballpark with two out. Umbrellas popping up. Folks are heading for cover. Here's Lorenzo Kane. And he looks to strike one. We mentioned we had a about a 30 minute rain delay at the start of this game, but then it cleared up nicely. The sun came out, but the rain has returned. The 0 1 pitch. Bouncing ball to second. Infante has it there and the threat is over. No runs, two hits, two left as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Tigers baseball today presented by Bell Tire. Current Royals player one college player of the year and also in the minors in back to back seasons. And the answer is. 
Alex Gordon back in 2005 in Nebraska and then in 2006 his first year in pro ball at double A Wilmington. And he's turned into the player that they expected he would be. 2 2 game bottom of the fifth inning. Alex Avila looks at ball one outside. It'll be Avila then Infante and then Austin Jackson. Tigers have managed only three hits against James Shields. And Avila cuts and misses 1 1. I was uh, listening to an interview that uh, Dayton Moore. Uh, their general manager did in spring training and he said the emergence of Gordon the last couple of years and what Billy Butler has done all uh, his big league career is one of the main reasons why they decided to trade uh, Will Myers to Tampa for pitching. Ground ball right side Chris gets to the grass one out. He felt like uh, the other kids Hosmer Mustakis Escobar came. It would be some good players, but he felt very comfortable with uh, where Gordon and also Butler have gone. Well, here are some numbers on Alex Gordon. We're talking about those two years. He hit 372 at Nebraska in 05, and then follow that up his first year in professional baseball with 101 RBIs. That's going from an aluminum bat to a wood bat and straight to double A. That's tough league to double A. Pretty impressive. That's why all the high expectations. Infante lines one to Gordon in the left, and he's going to slide, and he can't hold on to it. Infante is aboard. Gordon was indecisive there whether to leave his feet, whether to stay up. It turns out that he probably should have stayed up, and by going to the slide, he trains the eye level and then not able to make the play cleanly. Could have stayed on his feet and made this play. Did not watch the ball into the glove. You can see the glove is right in front of his face. One on one out. Now the top of the lineup coming up. Austin Jackson stands in. AJ with a double and a ground out. Ball one. They have ruled that a base hit, which would be the fourth Tigers hit of the afternoon. Infante on base two more times in this game. The mask of Perez. One ball and one strike. Jackson tried to get it restarted, was 0 for 23 coming into this game, and then he doubled in his first at bat and scored a run. Shields already has a complete game under his belt this year. He threw it against Boston in a 3 to 2 loss. This is Shields' fifth start this year. And his fourth start on the road. Only one start at home so far for James Shields. Jackson bunts it foul. Boy, Jackson had a really good pitch to bunt right there. 86 miles an hour. It's up in the zone. Really, all you have to do is take your time and get it down. A little breaking ball that didn't do a whole lot. And where Mustakis was playing him, that would have been an easy base hit for Austin. Here's the one two. It'll get away from Perez. Gonna roll toward the dugout and Perez snatches it right before it goes down the steps. It's another wild pitch. What is that three of them already yeah. today? Two last inning.
runner in scoring position and a 2 2 gain. Can the Tigers take advantage? Shields wants Perez now to re go through the signs one more time. He'll reshuffle the signals. And now he'll walk out to the mound. Tigers got a run in the first on the RBI hit by Cabrera. Sack fly by Peralta in the fourth. Tigers today two for five with men in scoring position. And the 2 2. Fouled away. Shields, a couple of years ago, back in 2011, finished third in the Cy Young voting, and that, of course, was the year that Justin Verlander won it. Jared Weaver finished second. Shields won 16 games, had an ERA of 2.82. Inside run it full now three and two. The rain has lightened up here at the ballpark. Three two pitch checked it and there's ball four. They'll appeal and say that he held up. This Sunday at 8.05, the Tigers battle the Atlanta Braves. Don't miss the special pregame ceremony honoring 1984 World Series champ Larry Herndon. For tickets, call 866-66-TIGER or visit tigers.com. We leave that celebration in 1984. Atlanta Braves already in town. They have an off day today, so they're chilling at their hotel this afternoon. Braves will certainly be a tough test for the Tigers. A 15 and 6 start for Atlanta. That's the best record in the majors. Ball outside to Torrey Hunter. They'll be without uh, Jason Hayward. Appendectomy surgery uh, in Colorado just a couple of days ago for their talented right fielder. So uh, we won't see that trio of outfielders, the Uptons and, and Hayward. Line drive, base hit to left. Infante coming to third, they send him home. Gordon's throw to the plate, not in time. Scoring standing up, Infante, and the Tigers have taken the lead. Tenth RBI for Tony Hunter. Good secondary lead by Infante, and that's why Tom Brooken sent him home against one of your better throwing left fielders uh, in the American League. And the reason why Gordon is so good at throwing the baseball is he played third base early in his career. He has a very quick release, takes very little time uh, getting that ball on its way to home plate, and the speedy Omar able to make it safely. Five hits now for Detroit. They have scored single runs in each of the last two innings. And now the heart of the order coming up to face Shields. With only one out. Tom Brookins has made a couple of really good decisions over at third base today. The Prince Fielder. Uh, he was able to tag up a couple of innings ago and score on a fly ball to shallow center field. And then that decision right there to send. Omar Infante home against Alex Gordon in left field. Cabrera had an RBI single back in the first inning. Tigers have taken a 3 2 lead. And he lines one to third. They're going to get a double play on this. Right to Mustakis to end the inning. However, the Tigers put together a couple of hits, a walk, and they take the lead.
third first in this game it was Cabrera and continuing his assault in his career against big game James Shields and then it was uh, Billy Butler their RBI machine singling in a run very early in this game they did it once again the fourth inning sack fly to the outfield Torrey Hunter did not throw out the runner there it's Kane he can really run the Tigers also scored one more run it was a sack fly as well in the outfield so really nice playing by the Tigers so far here today and and there's one more run scored here off the bat of Torrey Hunter. RBI single from Hunter in the fifth inning, giving the Tigers a 3 to 2 lead. And the RBI for Torrey is 10th. So Verlander now with a one run edge as we go to the sixth. Royals have left six men on base. Tigers have stranded three. Mike Mustakis will start things off for Casey. Then Frank Coor and then Salvador Perez. In there for a strike, and the sixth inning is underway here this afternoon. Mustak is a fly ball and a pop up, and now just two for his previous 25 at bats. The 0 1. Make it 0 2 on the outer edge. Back to back change ups and from Verlander to Mustakis. Verlander's had a really good change up today, but usually brings that pitch with him every time he takes the rubber. To third base on a soft line. Cabrera handles it there. One gone. As we go back to the studio now for a game break, Ryan Field. <laughs> Same score here, Ryan. Three to two. Tigers have the lead in the sixth inning. And a ball high to Jeff Francoeur. Francoeur, former Atlanta Brave, also played with the Mets and briefly with Texas for the stretch run a couple of years ago. Checked it down low. Francoeur has such a big rookie season with the Atlanta Braves. A lot was expected of him. And Francoeur admitted that, you know, when he came up, he had a lot of veteran guys around him like Andrew Jones, Chipper Jones. Edgar Renteria swing and a miss two and one and as those guys either moved on or were injured Frank Coeur became a little bit older and a lot more was counted on from Frank Coeur. And so he felt a little bit more pressure in his days in Atlanta. But he's been a veteran that's put up decent numbers and we know about his arm we've seen that over and over. The two one. But it's a good example I think Rod, of, of a guy that when he breaks in if he's got a lot of good veteran players around him can make it easy. It does uh, especially if you have some leadership skills they also had some good pitchers on that team and although you mentioned the position players. Uh, you can also get some leadership from the pitchers they had good pitchers back in those days in Atlanta. Yeah. Good point. Rolled slowly toward third Cabrera. Two outs. And Verlander's top fastball today, 95, set change up at 77. And we thank uh, Xfinity, sponsored by Comcast, for those readings on Justin. For Salvador Perez, who knocked in a run with a sack fly back in the fourth. Speaking of Frank Coor, it's funny how a couple of years ago when Dayton Moore uh, brought him in as a free agent, he was the leader on this very young Braves team. I mean, excuse me. Royals team. And it's a Royals team that has grown up, at least a lot of these guys have together. Which I think is one of the reasons why they're playing so well this year. But Frank Coor, his numbers uh, dipped a little bit last year. Here's the 0 1. Soft liner on one hop to the shortstop. Johnny has it there. It's going to be a 1 2 3 inning for Justin Verlander. His first 1 2 3 frame since the second.
a look at a play a couple of innings ago with Kane, the center fielder, aggressively running into right field after the ball was hit off the bat of Johnny Peralta. And Prince Fielder tags up from third. It's going to be a bang bang play. And many have questioned should Hosmer have cut this ball? If he lets it go, I think Prince probably still would have been safe. But he made the decision to cut it off, and the Tigers scored a run there. Here's another question. Does anybody call for the cut on that play? That's a great question. I think a lot of times uh, when you're in high school and college you, you hear more of that cut mm -hmm. than you do in the major leagues because usually you have full stadiums and when there's plays at the plate the crowd usually gets rowdy and loud. Sometimes you can't hear if you're the first baseman that catcher telling you to cut that ball. Therefore if you're Hosmer and Hosmer is a very talented first baseman you're kind of running with your head on the swivel. You take a look at Prince Fielder. You know what the speed is of Prince. You know the arm strength of your outfielder in Kane. And that's when you have to make a split second decision whether you let it go or not. And one thing that we didn't see there, and I don't know for sure, that throw could have been offline there. It may not have been directly online for Perez to get the out at home plate. Two and one on Fielder as we start things off here in the bottom of the sixth. Three to two, Detroit. And the Prince looks at a strike. Shields is doing what he always does against Tigers hitters. He pitches very well against them. Five and one in his career. Now that's the best record that he has against any team in the American League Central. In the air, left field coming in is Gordon toward the line. With the sun out now, he stares into that sunshine. One gone. <laughs> Remind you to join us again tomorrow. The Tigers take on the Atlanta Braves. Coverage begins at 6 o'clock with Tigers Live. Tigers and Braves from here at the ballpark tomorrow night at 6, right here on Fox Sports Detroit. That'll be a fun series over the weekend. Numbers on Shields 80 pitches thrown now, 49 strikes. Here's Martinez. Ball one to Victor. 0 for two strikeout flyout. We talk about how Shields likes to go deep in games and many times will throw a complete game. He's got one this year. 11 complete games a couple of years ago. But he's earned that title as workhorse six straight years of 200 or more innings and you would imagine he'll get there easily again this year. Breaks outside two and one. 31 years old, James Shields. It's not often the teams, especially teams that are in pennant races and are expected to challenge for playoff spots, will trade a talent like Shields, but that's just how much depth the Rays have had in their rotation. That's skied in the air to left center. Gordon coming in for this one as well. Two outs. And it probably also speaks to how desperately they needed to add some offensive punch to their organization. Here's Johnny Peralta. His sack fly knocked in a run back in the fourth. Been a good start for Johnny, which is good to see because of his numbers last year. They took a step back from 2011. Johnny right now at 307. 0 and 1. Leads the major league since the start of the 2011 season, 15 complete games. Well, the Kansas City Royals desperately needed to upgrade their starting rotation because their bullpen threw a lot of innings last year. The only other bullpen that threw more innings than they did, the Colorado Rockies. Although their bullpen last year did lead. 
uh, the American League in striking. They got a good bullpen. One and two. It's going to be even better though if they get those starters to continue to go deep in games as they have this year. No doubt. Getz will throw him out. Perelta gone. One, two, three for Shields. On to the seventh. Check availability at 1 800. Pick ATT. Rethink possible. It has been a tight one here this afternoon in the Motor City. It's 3 2 in favor of the Tigers as we slide to the seventh inning in this one. It's been a uh, kind of a weird day weather wise. We had a rain delay of about a half hour. Then the sun came out. Then it started raining again. Now the sun is out again. Well, if you're the Tigers corner infielders, you have to be aware of the fact that Getz will butt for a base hit on occasion. And judging by the way that they're playing him defensively, he may try to take it towards second base. Gets and then Gordon and then Escobar. No sign of bunt there. Strike one on Gets, who has a ground out and a fly out. 236 batting average for the Gross Point South product. The 0 1. Outside one ball one strike. The bunt in a one run game here late seemingly would be a, a nice call here. Well because that's because you get your leadoff hitter and to the plate Gordon who has been very good this year. There it is but he let it go by. Had that ball been inside he probably would have taken that right toward a second base. And, but that change up excuse me that fastball faded down and away from Getz. Therefore, he simply pulled the bat back. Fouled back out of play 2 2. Verlander had a 1 2 3 6. He's gotten him in order just twice in this game today. It's not been a big strikeout game for Justin. He's had four. And he backs him out of there. Three and two. Some of the best games that Verlander has pitched the last couple of years have been games where he didn't rack up a lot of strikeouts. Yeah. Popped up. Shallow left. Kelly is there. He had very few in his second no hitter, didn't he? In Toronto. I can't remember how many he had, but there weren't very many. He had a lot of them in his first no hitter. One out, and that'll bring up Alex Gordon. Who is 0 for 3. Off, 
Gordon sends one into center field. That'll drop. Base hit. So the tying run is on now for the Royals. Gordon has his first hit this afternoon. And that'll bring up Escobar. It's a change up that stays up. And Gordon able to reach out and serve it into shallow center field. Verlander in that second no hitter that he threw against the Toronto Blue Jays a couple of years ago had just four strikeouts in that game. Escobar is one for three. Runner goes and a bouncer back to the mound. Verlander fires to second one in the relay. Nice job. Wow, Justin. I don't think they had a chance. A lot of traffic down there at second. Justin let that thing fly. He threw a seed to Peralta, didn't he? One. Six, The Royals and Tigers hooked up on a close one here in the bottom of the seventh, three to two in favor of Detroit. Justin Verlander, seven innings, one earned run, four strikeouts. James Shields with six strong innings as well. And Shields back to work. Don Kelly, Alex Avila, Omar Infante. And that Tigers bullpen is quiet, which means Verlander will go back out there for the start of the eighth inning. Ball outside. Well, that's something Jim Leland talked about. He said, before the game today, hopefully our horse will give us some innings. And Verlander has done just that. Here's the 1 1 to Kelly. High fly ball right field. Frank Coor toward the corner, one out. Shields, meanwhile, has retired five in a row. Here's Alex Avila. Verlander 96 pitches through seven innings of work. Shields started this inning with 89 in his back pocket. Home plate umpire Bill Welke walking to the KC dugout and chatting with Ned Yost. Well, Jim Leland it came out and he had a conversation with Bill Welke first. And then whatever that conversation was about, it appears that Welke took that same information over to the Kansas City Royals manager. Here's Avila. Alex 0 for 2. There is some activity now in that Tigers bullpen. Looks like Benoit and Cope. 
up getting loose. Rondon, Rondon, and Cole. Cole. The 0 1. Well, Jim said he wasn't really sure or didn't have a uh, cemented plan on when Rondon would get into a game, what the situation would be, but he did make it clear if you are up here, and he's always said this, you're going to play. I'm going to use you. Here's the uh, hot prospect, Bruce Rondon. Tiger is more than likely not so much today. What I'm thinking, Jim probably will use Rondon the same way that he used Joe Zamaya uh, back in 2006. Of course, Zamaya was a flamethrower. He started out by using Zamaya in the sixth inning, and then he worked his way to the seventh. And before the year was over, Jim was using him in the eighth inning on many, many occasions. It seemed to be a uh, pretty good plan. Justin Verlander now chatting with Kevin Rand, the head athletic trainer. He might be done. He was uh, looking at his finger. Here's the one two. Outside, two balls, two strikes. Three to two, Tigers have the lead. We're in the bottom of the seventh. And from the looks of it, uh, Justin may be done for the afternoon. Here's the 2 2. Vila swings and misses. Down he goes. So Shields now really feeling it. Six in a row retired by the KC right hander. Working on uh, JV's thumb. Infante in the air to right field. Frank Coor coming in. And Shields has himself a one, two, three frame. So we will head to the eighth. And Justin Verlander did not rack up a lot of strikeouts, just four in this game. Uh, the first couple came on well located fastballs. Next two came on breaking balls. So good afternoon for Justin Verlander, who had to leave with cracked skin, they say, on his right thumb after throwing just 98 pitches. And so he is done for the afternoon, which means it is time for the Major League debut for Bruce Rondon in our wall side windows pitching chain. Hey, Rondon's got a big arm. He's got a fastball that will get up to 102 uh, miles an hour. He also has a slider. And it's that slider that Jim believes is going to uh, make the transition to the big leagues a little bit easier for Rondon if he's able to throw that pitch in certain situations. 
Well, we know all about Bruce in his six seasons in the minor leagues. His strikeouts per nine, almost ten strikeouts per nine innings. And so Rondon will get his first taste of the major league here this afternoon, and it's his job here in the eighth to protect a one-run lead. He's facing a guy that's kind of had his way against Tigers pitching in his career, and that would be Billy Butler. And Rondon delivers ball one on a 98 mile an hour fastball. He's just getting loose. Butler Hosmer Kane. Three four and five in the Royals lineup. Low and away. Another fastball two and oh. It appears now that that conversation that uh, Jim had. The last half inning with Bill Welke, the home plate umpire, was telling Bill that Verlander had an issue with his thumb and they may need some extra time to get whoever they were entertaining the thought of bringing into the game, give them more time to warm up. Soft line drive to right, and Billy Butler starts it off with a single. He can just hit. 98 mile an hour fastball, and he shoots one into right. So he's the tying run and he will be lifted from the game. They'll get a pinch runner. Dyson will pinch run. Dyson will not stay at first base very long. Tremendous speed and he will attempt to steal second. It's a ninth hit this afternoon for the Royals and three for Butler. Eric Hosmer the batter. One ball and no strikes. Rondon, Tigers minor league pitcher of the year last season, recorded 29 saves between Lakeland, Erie, and Toledo. A ball, double A, triple A. Dyson stole 30 last year. There he goes. Big jump. No chance at all for Avila. You have to be careful if you're Ron Doan with the fact that Dyson will steal third base. Avila had no chance there. What a jump. Put the tying run in scoring position with nobody out. Hosmer has a single and a double in this game. He's ahead on the count 2 and 0. Oh. Ooh, big swing there. Through a 99 mile an hour fastball. Wow. Right down the middle. Two and one. Lorenzo Kane will be next. Fouled away. You would think that uh, as hard as Rondon is throwing, and he just threw a fastball at 100 miles an hour, it would be Infante that would be holding Kane. A little bit closer to second base, making sure he doesn't steal versus Johnny Peralta because Hosmer's good, but it's hard to turn on a hundred mile power fastball. Usually they go the other way. Pulls it toward Infante. Broke his bat in the process. Move the runner up, and Hosmer is up. That's a good pitch there by Rondon. It's an 85 mile power slider. And we're talking about 15 mile per hour differential from the previous 100 mile per hour pitch. Let's make it our bell tire pitch by pitch at how Rondon attacks the very talented Hosmer, although off to a slow start. 
couple of fastballs, one at 98, one at 100 miles an hour. Then he comes back with the slide piece at 85. Infield in for Detroit. Kane fouls it back out of play. Dyson at third. He is the tying run. Lorenzo Kane is one for three. Rondon had his contract recalled from Toledo prior to Tuesday's scheduled game against the Royals. He'll get back out of play, and the count is 0 and 2. Looks like Dyson over at third base. And the base runner is coming on contact. Very aggressive secondary lead. Even with the Tigers infielders playing where they're playing right now. And that last pitch again was triple digits, 100 miles an hour. Need to strike out. Avila smothers it. One and two. The stock is waiting on deck. Rondon takes over for Verlander, who threw 96 pitches before coming out of this game. In the air, shallow center field. Jackson on the run. He'll make the catch. Dyson tagging. Going to try and score. Throw to the plate is off target. Dyson scores standing up, and we are tied at three. I don't know about that pitch. I mean, 100 mile power fastball, and he allowed him to put it in play. He threw an 87 mile power breaking ball. Nice job by Kane, but I would have liked to see that 100 mile power fastball again up in the zone. So Kane gets an RBI. It'll be his tenth of the year, and we're tied up now. Jeff Jones gets on the telephone. Two outs, base is empty, and here is Mike Mustakis. Ball one. Oh for three today for Mustakis. The first Royals run since they got one in the fourth. Checked it low and he went. Field and Culbreth down at third. One ball, one strike. Pull down the right field line. Fair ball. This is going to go to the corner. Mustak is motoring towards second. He'll take a look but hold up. Eddie Rodriguez throws up the hold sign. And a two out double. It's a fastball inside and somehow Mustak is able to get to it. He hit it down toward the label but still strong enough to muscle that ball down toward the right field corner. And before Hunter was able to get over and pick it up, Mustak is a stand up double. And that'll be 10 hits on the afternoon for the Royals. Now a chance to go ahead. There goes the runner to third. Swing and a miss and no throw. Mustak is swiping third, standing up. First stolen base of the year. Popped him up. Right side of the infield. Fielder is waiting for it. And that will end the inning. So they'll settle for one run, but they tie it up.
go to the bottom of the eighth here at the ballpark. The Tigers and Royals all tied up now. 3 3 is our score, and the Tigers have the top of the order coming up. It'll be Jackson, Hunter, and Cabrera facing James Shields. And Shields has a count of one ball and one strike, and that was his 100th pitch of the afternoon, 62 of which were strikes. Here's the 1 1. Two balls and one strike. Jackson on base twice in this game. Walk, double, run scored. Here's the 2 1. Two balls, two strikes. Tigers have gotten RBIs from two of their top three hitters, Hunter and Cabrera. Peralta has the other. Royals have doubled up the hit total on the Tigers, 10 5. Here's the 2 2. To the shortstop, Escobar on one hop. Jackson is out. One away in the bottom of the eighth. We'll bring up Tory Hunter. So Verlander will get a no decision in this game. Justin went seven good innings through 96 pitches before Rondon came out of the eighth and gave up a run in his major league debut. Hunter now is knocked in 10, two singles today. Center field for round number two. Fans, don't forget about the Super Spring Special April 29th through May 1st at Comerica Park. Upper box seats are half price at only. Thirteen dollars eight six 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 tiger or tigers dot com the super spring special save yourself some money. Here is Cabrera. And it's strike one. Miguel had a single to drive in a run back in the first inning. One of the five tigers hits. We build this game as two starters that had a lot of success against their opponent today, and well, both guys have pretty much stuck to the script. Shields and Verlander, both really good in this game. The 1-1, one -one, driven towards center field. Kane was playing deeply, and he'll come over to make the play. It's a 1-2-3 inning. Eight in the books as we go to the ninth. It's all tied up.
playoffs 22 consecutive years. Hopefully that'll be the case for the Wings. It is a 3-3 game here as we go to the top of the ninth inning. And Bruce Rondon is out there for his second inning of work. He will face Salvador Perez, Chris Getz, and then Alex Gordon. 3-10-0 for KC, 3-5-1 for Detroit. Another uh, well played game between both of these teams, or a closely played game. Rondon starts with a fastball high, 1 0. Bruce is a native of Valencia, Venezuela. Still lives there. Tigers signed him back in 2007 as a free agent. And the following year made his pro debut. Bouncer back up the middle and it's through a base hit. Salvador Perez with the leadoff single. It's 11 hits now for KC. It's a 96 mile per hour fastball that Perez reaches out to get and hits it right back through the middle. Jim Leland comes marching out. And appears to be it for Bruce Rondon. He will go an inning plus here this afternoon. And the skipper takes the baseball. Phil Coke coming out of the Detroit bullpen. It's a wall side windows pitching change. We're in the ninth. We'll be back. Bruce Rondone here with the leadoff man on in the ninth inning. Got a pinch runner as well at first base. Elliot Johnson will pinch run for Salvador Perez. That'll give him a little more speed down there at first. He's the go-ahead run. And the bun is in order, and that's exactly why uh, Ned Yost decided to run for Perez. Perez not running very well. Appeared to hurt his ankle uh, earlier in this game when he had a little bit of a collision with Prince Fielder at home plate. Chris gets two fly balls and a ground out. And he'll square. Oh, he laid it down. Coke will come off and throw him out at first base. I don't know how he was able to successfully a bunt that baseball. It looked like it was going to hit him had he not been able to make contact with it. That'll put the go ahead run at second base. One out. Sacrifice for Getz. Royals today with runners in scoring position. One for five. Gordon is single in fourth bats. Strike one.
318 for the season, but only one for five today. Verlander went seven, Rondon an inning plus one batter, and now Coke here in the ninth. Rolled foul. Well, it's 0 2. Got to make a quality pitch here to Gordon. Gordon's been wearing out left handed pitching uh, the first three weeks of the season, batting average over 400. If Phil Coke decides to throw him another breaking ball, he has to make sure he gets that thing away. And from Gordon where he can't reach it and that means Alex. He's got to be ready to move as well to block it if he happens to throw it in the dirt. Swing and a miss. Gordon is gone. Big strike out there for Phil. His first of the afternoon. Two outs. Great location with the breaking ball. And he buried that ball down and in to Gordon. Alcides Escobar will not bat. They're going to walk him intentionally with first base open. Gerard Dyson waiting on deck. And we'll put two runners aboard and give Dyson an opportunity. There's ball three missing outside. Dyson is four for 14 this year. And he'll walk in now with two men on, two men out. And Dyson pinch ran for Billy Butler after Butler singled to lead off the eighth against Bruce Rondon. Well, Ned Yost deciding he got a, had to get that run in, and he was willing to give up Butler, and it did work out because he stole a base and then scored a run later in the inning. Now he's trying to deliver a base hit to put his team ahead. Strike one. The 0 1 pitch. Phil Coke in place of Bruce Rondone here in the ninth leadoff single by Perez chasing Rondone. Here's the 1 1. Swing and a miss. Now it's 1 and 2. Good firm fastball right by Dyson in the low 90s. And the one two. Little floater in the shallow left center and caught by Kelly to end the inning. No runs. They're going to hit an intentional walk and lead two. Fielder leads it off.
has delivery of the game. Uh, Tory Hunter, a singling between the shortstop and the third baseman to drive in the third one of the game for the Tigers. That happened back in the fifth inning of this game. Tigers trying to win in walk off fashion here as we go to the bottom of the ninth. It is a 3 3 ball game. Tigers today have been limited to just five hits in this contest. A couple of changes for Kansas City. We'll start behind the plate where George Kataris will come on to catch Perez out of the contest. And they have a new pitcher as well. Tim Collins will check in. Collins is picking up right where he left off uh, last year. Uh, not very big in stature, but he's got a really good arm. Fastball will get up to 95 miles an hour, but he's got an outstanding curveball. 93 strikeouts for Collins last year out of that Kansas City Royals bullpen. That led all American League relievers. I mentioned the Royals pen as a whole last year. Friends two for four against Collins with one big fly. And bullpen last year for the Royals led the American League. In fact, it was an American League record in strikeouts, and Collins a big reason for that. So Fielder starts it off in a 3-3 game. Ball one missing outside. Fielder and then Martinez and then Peralta. Strike call. One and one. The 93 strikeouts last year as well by Collins established a team record for a left hander. Ball outside. Lefty reliever that is. Two and one. Prince in the ball game. It's been on base once. Walked, scored a run back in the fourth. Tigers have not scored since getting a run in the fifth inning. Outside again. Fielder leading the American League and walks with 16. Is ahead in the count now, three and one. Strike call, three two. Nice little bender there from Collins right over the dish. Got him. Strike three in the outer edge. He painted with a 94 mile an hour fastball. One out. Not a whole lot you can do uh, with this fastball. Great location. Box track says maybe just a touch outside. Here's Victor Martinez. Victor 0 for 3. Take strike one. Again up with the right hand goes Bill Welke and it's 0 2. Metal bounce in. Here's the one two way high two balls and two strikes. It's 
Tigers last year were eight and one in this ballpark against the Royals. There's a line drive foul down the left field line. Got a hanging breaking ball there, did Martinez from Collins. And uh, Victor stayed back about as long as he could. Still caught it out in front. Hit it hard, but well fouled down that third baseline. So it's two and two. Three and two. He's got some bite on that curveball. Collins listed at 5'7, 170 pounds out of Worcester, Mass. 23 years old. Bouncing ball to third. Right Mustakis. Vicker is out too gone. Bring up Johnny Peralta. Three for six against Collins in his career. Peralta has an RBI today with the sacrifice fly. Otherwise, he is 0 for 2. Ends out of the way of strike one. Outside. It's amazing a guy like this, Collins, now but as soon as because of his size, he went undrafted. He was signed as a free agent. Threw that one behind Peralta. Know about that. Two and one. Three for six. Guy hitting 500 off of me. Left hander in the on deck circle. Fastball behind you. Yeah. A little iffy. Swing and a miss. Big rip there by Peralta, two and two. And usually when you take these big rips, and you come up empty. Missed it inside. Three and two the count. So the two outs, three and two on Johnny Peralta, tied at three in the ninth. Here it is. Swing and a miss to strike him out. One, two, three inning for Tim Collins with a couple of strikeouts. We will go extras today here at the ballpark, all tied at three.
Tigers scored their third run of the game. It came in the fifth inning on a base hit to left field. Omar Infante came home to touch home plate. Then Salvador Perez sacrificed fly into center field. And Gerard Dyson coming home to score after he had pinch ran and stolen the base in that inning. He ran for Billy Butler. So the Tigers once again early this season will go extra innings as we go to the 10th Phil Coke back out to the mound Tigers had three extra inning games on the last road trip. One that went 12 one that went 13 and one that went 14. 3 3 game and Eric Hosmer will start things off for KC. Royals tied it up with a run in the eighth on a sacrifice fly by Lorenzo Cain. Osmer in this one is two out of four, single and a double. Strike one is a call on Eric Osmer. Low ball one. Hosmer, Kane, and Mustakis here in the Kansas City 10th. Three runs, 11 hits for the Royals. Three runs, five hits for the Tigers. And a ground ball to second. He hit it right at Omar Infante. Time now for the upcoming pitching matchup presented by Gordon Chevrolet. And look who's coming to town. It'll be the Atlanta Braves coming in. Anibal Sanchez and Paul Mahalam will get together in game one. Good numbers for Mahalam. Three and one with the ERA. Just over one with 25 strikeouts and eight walks. Sanchez is having an outstanding year himself. It should be a real good three game series with the Atlanta Braves coming to town led by Freddie Gonzalez. Their skipper. Here is Lorenzo Cain. Tigers getting a look at a National League opponent. It happens to be the team in the National League with the most victory so far 15. Atlanta took a tough loss yesterday in 12 innings. Their closer, Kimbrell, gave up two runs in the ninth inning to the Colorado Rockies, which is rare for him. He's been outstanding since coming to the big leagues. One ball, one strike. Phil Coke came on after the leadoff single in the ninth and shut the door. Rolled foul, one and two. The Tigers have an interesting interleague schedule this year. Of course, Houston has come over from the National League into the American League, but the Tigers going to Washington on the next road trip. Also, road games in the NL against Pittsburgh. Mets. Toward left center field, that's going to get down. Perhaps extra bases. Let's see. Kane takes the turn. He's going to second and the throw is late. One out, two base hit for Lorenzo Kane. For the most part, the Tigers have been able to keep Kane quiet in this series. He came in their hottest hitter. The 77 mile per hour breaking ball that stayed up and away from Kane, and he was able to hit it back to left center field before Jackson came up with it. He was uh, standing up at second. That is the 12th hit this afternoon now for KC. You have to keep all these Kansas City Royals. Base runners very close at second base. For the most part, they've all got the green light. And with the exception of probably Billy Butler and Salvador Perez, the catcher. Everybody else can run at will. Stock has had a double in his last at bat. The Royals have left nine on base in this game. Tigers only three. Shields and Verlander both out of the game. Here's the 1 0. 2 0 on Mike Moustakis. After doubling in the eighth, he stole a base, stole third base, but was stranded there.
And the 2 0 pitch. It's a ball, 3 0. Action in the Detroit bullpen. Lefty Darren Downs. Strike call 3 and 1. And Stock is taking a 3 0 pitch. There's Frank Coor waiting on deck. Way inside. That'll be a walk. For Mustakas, two men aboard. Frank Coor coming up. Downs warming up at the bullpen. It's not pitched since last Friday in Anaheim. Pope trying to get through this tenth. Umbrellas are popping up again here at the ballpark. If you feel Coke here, no need in really in throwing a pitch over the heart of the plate to Frank Coor. He'll chase something on the very first pitch. Very aggressive hitter. Doesn't walk very often. Only one base on balls this year by Frank Coor. Way inside. It'll roll away from Avila. Advance the runners. Wow. Didn't need that. Second and third. Tigers gonna have to load him up now. It's a changeup that he just kind of holds on to a little bit too long, and it goes down and in. And Vila can't get over and block it. Wild pitch. There's been quite a few wild pitches in this game. James Shields had three of them. Rain's starting to come down now. They're just gonna finish him off here with the intentional walk and load the bases. George Kataris waiting on deck. He came on as a defensive replacement. He'll get his first at bat. Rain on and off this afternoon here at the ballpark. It's falling again. There's ball four outside to Frank Coor. And load him up with Royals. MLB.com at bat is the number one source. For live baseball everywhere you go, available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Detroit Tigers baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826. Phil Coke last Sunday. In Anaheim, threw a 3 1 changeup to Mark Trumbo, and Mark Trumbo ended the game. Jeff Jones out to have a chat with Coke. In a 3 3 game, the Royals have loaded the bases. And that was a conversation giving Phil Coke the scouting report on Qataris, and it's also a situation where the Tigers have to be aware of the fact that it could be a squeeze play. And Kane on third base has outstanding speed. And we know Ned Yost is a very aggressive manager when it comes to uh, hitting and running and allowing guys to steal. And he may take the liberty himself here to uh, will his team to a victory by a squeeze bunt. So Kataris, who won the backup job in spring training, takes ball one. Last year with the Brewers and with the Athletics. Kane, Mustakis, and Francoeur, the base runners. Rain's starting to fall hard again. One ball to no strikes. Two and zero oh as it bounces in. Well, base is loaded. 2 and 0. If there was ever a time to put on a squeeze, this would be that time. 
He's got to throw it over the plate. Let's see. Three and oh. And no place to put George Guitars. Kane at third started things off with a one out double. Stockus and Francoeur have walked. Three oh pitch. Strike call. Guitars thought he had a walk. Three and one. Ball four, that'll force in a run. Coke walks, Kataris, and the Royals have taken the lead, and here comes Jim Leland. Darren Downs has been warming up, and he'll come trotting in. Three straight walks, although one intentional for Phil Coke. He will depart. Kane comes in with a go ahead run. The wild pitch is very costly there. With two Francoeur. Francoeur not having a particularly a great season. And after the wild pitch, they forced the walk. The base is loaded. So the skipper hands the baseball over to Darren Downs. By the way, don't forget, as soon as this game ends, our coverage is only getting started with Tigers Live. We'll hear from Jim Leland. Players as well. We'll break down all the highlights. And we'll show you uh, just about everything to cover this ball game here this afternoon. Tigers live immediately after the game from the Call Sam Studios. It is yet to be decided. Darren Downs off to a pretty nice start here in 2013, along with a few other, a few other of his members out of that bullpen, Smiley, Albuquerque, and also Joaquin Benoit, all sub two ERAs first three weeks of the year. Darren Downs made the ball club this year based on a really good last season and a terrific spring camp. And here are his numbers. 13 strikeouts only four walks so far this year in eight and a third innings for Downs the batting average that bottom note it is under 100 so he has gotten off to a terrific start. And he inherits a difficult spot. The bases loaded walk to Kataris has given the Royals a four to three lead. Chris Getz will be stepping up there with the bases loaded and still only one out. Double and three walks, forcing in a run for Kansas City. In the game that was well pitched by both starters, James Shields and Justin Verlander. So we'll see what kind of magic downs can work here as Getz strolls in. Tigers pulling him in on the infield defensively. Getz sacrificed his last time up. He is 0 for 3. Tigers today have been out hit 12 fine. Despite that, it's remained a close game all afternoon long. Ball high, one and one. Down saw his first major league action last year with the Tigers. Bouncing ball back up the middle, and Fonte is going to drop it. His throw is still in time to get the out. Nice recovery there by Infante. Really nice recovery. He jumps up to make the play, and he drops the baseball, but he alertly picks it up, throws off balance, and still gets 
uh, the force out even if he hadn't dropped it and got the ball to Avila with gets running. Uh, I doubt very seriously had they been able to get a double play there. Two outs that'll bring up Alex Gordon. Still a 4 3 game. One hit today for Gordon is single. Infield back now with two outs. And the 1 0. Two balls, no strikes. Tigers in the bottom of the tenth will have the bottom three due up. Kelly, Avila, and Fonte. Driven in the air to center field. Jackson moving back, still going back. He looks up. And that ball is gone. A grand slam to dead center field for Alex Gordon. That sounded loud when he left his bat. I knew it was trouble. And then when you turned around and you saw Jackson at number 14 start to coast. Wow. Well, you got to put your big boy pants on to hit it that far. Oh, my goodness. 420 to dead center into the bushes. He killed this. Oh. First career grand slam for Gordon. And the Royals have busted it open with a five run temp that is eight to three. Strike one on Escobar. The rain falling harder again. One ball, one strike. Base is loaded, walk, and a grand slam, and it's a five run inning. Swing and a miss. Sounded loud. E. It had that echo to it. Anytime you're looking at Jackson's number 14, it's not a good thing. That's rolled foul. One and two. So Gordon with four RBIs now has 15 for the season. Well, it looks like this Kansas City Royals team uh, is going to uh, wreak some havoc on a lot of the teams in the American League Central this year. New pitching staff, good bullpen. And really an offense, even though they got 13 knocks today, not clicking on all cylinders. There's another base hit down the left field line. Looks like extra bases. And it'll be a two out double for Alcides Escobar. He had 30 doubles last year. Well, it's an interesting Royals offense. They can do a little bit of everything. Obviously can hit the ball a long way and that Gordon home run, but they can create. They've got some speed. Steal some bases. Got some guys that can sacrifice Escobar with his fifth double. It's an interesting team for sure. Ground ball right side. Fonte gobbles it up and out at first base. Dyson retired but a big inning. Nine men to the plate. They score five times.
Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Visit ChevyDetroit.com. See why Chevy drives the Motor City. And by Wallside Windows, the official window company of Fox Sports Detroit. Well, it is an 8-3 to three ball game just like that. Alex Gordon, a grand slam home run, highlighting a five-run inning. Gordon getting it done, and that has blown this one open. And we've got a new pitcher now to try and close this one out. Greg Holland is on for the Royals. He's been good in the save in the save opportunity department. He has turned in five and he's only blown one, but the ERA is over six for Holland. And but the only the batting average at 217. He took over that closers role about halfway and during the regular 2012 season. John Kelly arm. leads it off and looks at a strike. Well, he was named the Royals pitcher of the year last year. In 67 outings, 16 saves, 296 earned run average. The 0 1. Ground ball foul, first base side. We're talking about Howland taking over that closer role. He did so on July the 31st and converted his first 13 straight. And the 0-2. Bouncing in. One ball, two strikes. Eight runs on 14 hits for KC. The Tigers, three runs, five hits. And the 1-2. Checked it. Strike three call. One out. On Sunday, Holland actually saved both ends of the doubleheader against the Red Sox. In fact, became the first Royal to do that since Roberto Hernandez had two saves in one day back in 2002. Yeah, that doesn't happen very often. The manager gets you up in the first game of a doubleheader, then gets you hot again and bring you into the game of that nightcap. Ball one to Avila. Oh for three for Alex today. Couple of strikeouts in a ground out. One and one. Atlanta Braves coming in tomorrow, starting a three game series. Then Minnesota next week before the Tigers hit the road again. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Fouled straight back, 1 2 on Avila. Tiger RBIs today. Cabrera singled one in. Sack fly by Peralta. Hunter RBI single. And again, only five Detroit hits today. Ball outside and the count goes two and two. Usually uh, three runs on a day that Verlander starts gets you a win. And but Verlander had to leave after pitching seven innings. Uh, throwing 96 pitches had an issue with his right thumb. Shields went eight for KC. The pen has done the rest so far. In fact the Royals bullpen has an ERA of 3.02 so far this season. And Yost's team is two outs away from their 11th victory of the season. They lead 8 3 here in the 10th. That'll get fouled down the left field line. Infante will bat next. The 
opponents batting just 200 against this Royals bullpen. Among the best in the American League in that category. The 2 2 fly ball left field. Gordon under it. Two gone. And the Tigers now down to their final out. It's Omar Infante strolling in. Single and a walk in this game for Infante. Collins came on in the ninth inning, got the Tigers one, two, three with a pair of strikeouts. And Holland trying to seal the deal here in the tenth. Down the middle it comes, strike one. One ball, one strike. And Omar Infante. Now Holland needs one more strike. One and two. What a goofy day weather-wise. It's sunny again right now. Rain has been intermittent all afternoon. We started this one with a 30-minute rain delay or so. Raining on and off. But a cloudy 10th inning for the Tigers as the Royals scored five. Little looper back a second should do it and gets makes the play and the Tigers will drop. The final game in this rain shortened series as the Royals get a big 10th. And beat the Tigers by a score of eight to three. Take a timeout come back and have more from Comerica Park.